and welcome. We continue with Chrono Trigger Second Skin, of course. As we've seen, the father has connected the dots a little bit. And I wonder what we will do now. I wonder what he will do now. Let's see what's happening over here for. Seems wintery a little bit. I like it. Winter for the win. Yes. Following her godmother's effort to attenuate her grief, the young Muru decided that she should at least attempt to convince her husband not to butcher their children's education too much. He will fall. She hastened to seek the advice of Georgis and Nahima in this matter so that she could extract the key points she was going to fight for and explain them in detail during lunch. She'll fight for, won't she? Put this tramper into your head, my dear. I'll ask you not to brush away my recommendations with your hand on the pretext that you do not like them. Some of them have indeed been suggested by friends of mine, but this does not make those recommendations as any, less re any less relevant. Furthermore, I'm quite capable of thinking about this also important topic on my own. Are you for? Are you? As much, obviously, as I do not agree with the old grandpa over here that you married. I also don't think you're capable of that, of thinking properly. Friends, you say? And who are those? Would you be so kind to let me know? What is this defensive tone, huh? What are you going to do prohibit me from talking to other human beings now? Is that your next goal? Huh? 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 Wanna fight? <laughs> you never introduced them to me, to the best of my knowledge. I have a right to be suspicious of them. Okay. I hate to say that, but actually a little bit of a fair point here. I already talked to you about my foster sister and you cannot meet her just yet. What a nice excuse! Your foster sister is merely a pretext, a smoke screen. You cannot possibly that I'm not aware of what you are doing. The princess was genuinely bewildered. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your lover, of course. I know you visit him in secret. Good lord. I fear your brain has been damaged, Genesee. And I'm an, I am an expert because mine is as well. That should be the line of over here, by the way. I keep telling you that I have never been unfaithful. Stop inventing imaginary lovers. Oh, because the young Genozi merchant is imaginary. Are you perhaps taking me for a fool? What, Georges? So he's the one you are concerned about? You're ridiculous, my dear. Georges is a friend. There is absolutely nothing between us. Besides, he's too respectful to ever dare to behave inappropriately toward me. Oh, prove it! There is no way to prove it, and you know it all too well. Honestly, I would play, you know, if... Okay. Let's say I'm in Hyona's... Shoes right now, right? Play the reverse card. How do I know you don't freaking cheat, you bastard? Huh? You are never up to the task? And so on. Come on, Kiona, you can do this. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, why don't you play this card? Come on. You don't, you distrust tires me. Discussion is now over. And without giving any further attention to his vociferations, she got up from the table and returned to her room. She made sure the door was locked. She had developed this habit to be able to read in peace. I mean, to be fair, you've developed. I bet you developed that habit back in the previous loop, in previous location. Infuriating! This man is infuriating. <laughs> Anywhere I go, I'm constantly hitting all of his sections. I wonder how his former wife managed to tolerate him. 
Well, she didn't. I think it it wasn't explained how or what exactly was the reason of her death, right? I think. Uh, to be honest, I would not be surprised if her psych basically gave up. And, y you know, obviously she would stress about stuff and so on. Because of how she's being treated. And that probably could have some influence on other elements. Which, you know, her health will eventually deteriorate and end. But that's just a theory. <laughs> I would know it's pretty nice if I was actually a little bit right, at least a little bit. Can I shock and open a small furniture item? What is it? What is the item? The Harris had stored in the single drawer that alluded to her all the items that were dear to her heart. Namely, the tiny packet of herbs she had purchased at the marketplace and all of Nahima's letters. She grabbed the one on top of the pile, the most recent one. Georges had brought it to her the day before and she had kept reading it again and again since then. Is the same that we read? No. The princess! I need to inform you of something of the utmost importance. Your father is currently missing. He had not shown himself in a while now, but servants would still bring him food. And... We? I think that's we, right? It's kind of like start of an M and then it's... Or, or more like start of an N and it turns into the V. <laughs> but I think it's we. We would hear noises coming from his quarters. We both thought he was up to something mysterious. Nef uh, sorry, nefarious. It would seem we were mistaken. He suddenly vanished one night and nobody has seen him ever since. Oh, there is more. The few violets who are still living in the castle consider he fled because of debt. Discontent but is rising and everyone only speaks of living. I mean, yeah. I'm surprised you are, you, you guys are sticking around, to be honest, considering... I mean, this kingdom is doomed to fail already. The situation is likely to change rapidly, so I need a quick answer from you. Do you allow me to come to Kenoa? You're devoted Nahima. Just say yes. The young woman lay down on the bed in order to make herself more comfortable and remained deeply pensive. I suppose that my father has finally abandoned any idea of marrying me. Uh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. And that he has decided to go somewhere to start a new life. Unless he has died. Uh, uh, really? You were thinking that positively? I guess we have been cautious enough. This is a perfect opportunity for Rahima to move to Genoa. On one thing, I would consider... Okay, the father is probably... I don't know, somehow trying to find her. On the other, what if he... That's what he's exactly waiting for. For Nahima to make a move. I mean, we know he's able to creep around. So maybe he's doing exactly that right now. Granta will still have to convince Genesee to let her settle in the castle. At worst, she can still work as a returner in town and I will pay her a visit in my spare time. Kiona took up her pen to support her efforts. They had to anticipate the trip properly, but the princess was nonetheless looking forward to welcome her friend at her home and she was eagerly awaiting her arrival. I can hardly wait to be able to hold Nahima in my arms. Hopefully she will arrive in Genoa in time for a churching ceremony. I'll finally be allowed to go back to church and resume a normal life. Again, very optimistic of you. <laughs> Besides, life here will not be as sad if she's around. Very optimistic. No, the winter is unfinished, no. Unbeknown to the princess and her lady-in-waiting, Thibaut was still conducting his investigation. Upon going to the market where the precious wardrobe had been sold, he had tracked down its buyer who so happened to be in the area. 
What a coincidence. Taking advantage of this golden opportunity, he called out him one more ring and he was loading his shipment. Yeah. Nice outfit, mate. Tell me, Berchev. I have you transported the rather lavish letter to one drop a few months ago. I heard that you sold it for a tidy sub. Oh, good lord, you better remember. It was one of my best bargains of the summer. But how can this information be useful to you? The item is no longer in my possession. Oh, the fact is, I've heard that it is a splendid piece of furniture, and I would have liked to negotiate with its current owner with the hope of changing their mind. Oh, you're wasting your time. I also sold the wardrobe to the king of Genua, who is incredibly wealthy. As such, I highly doubt that he will agree to rid himself of it. Besides, I suggested that he gives it as a gift to his next wife and he precisely rebut it not so long ago. Even if he agrees, the lady will certainly refuse to part with an item of emotional value. Oh, the king of Geno, I say. Oh, I'm afraid I do not stand a chance, but I would like to thank you nonetheless. How to Christy, you know what type of woman he married? Oh, I have yet to meet her myself. She's a young woman of great beauty. No. Who appeared from nowhere as nobody had heard of her before. She seems to be well liked by her people. No sooner had the trader spoken those words than the old king's face became contorted in a predatory smile. Like a wolf, he squinted and whispered, You are mine at last, little swallow. The astrologist, divination by the entrails, achievement unlocked. What's this about? Quickly click outside the window. Uh, chronotopia. Nope, it does not really say anything more than what I read from what popped out in the game. So I'm not exactly sure what this is about. Sometime later, Tibor reached Genoa where he posed as a peddler of Valblu God, uh, God's goods. Every day he would go to the marketplace where he was tending to a small stall. He would sell all kinds of jewels as well as this stuff and spindles made of gold, remainders of his past glory. Naturally he would continually praise his customers and president talk about this new enigmatic queen. He would extract very little from them so he was constantly on the lookout for any opportunity to get closer to his daughter. Then one day, as he was doing his usual act, he saw her, or rather, he caught a glimpse of her from a distance. Despite the crowd, he immediately recognized her. How could he forget that face? The face that remain... reminded him of his late wife so much. Radiant, she was strolling with Georges, hardly laughing at one of his jokes. The vision filled his heart with ill-fated resentment and he felt his veins swell with hatred as never before. His daughter's happiness was such an offense that all his qualms vanished in one go. He then created a grim plan to have his revenge. Heh. That night, Thibaut went to Genesis Castle still disguised as merchant on the pretext of selling his product. The returners quickly led him to the queen as he possessed the most beautiful golden spindles ever seen. He had changed so much that she did not recognize him. Ugh. Oh, no, he didn't. That she did not even think that her father could be here under her eyes. Gentlemen, I've been told that you are selling items of extreme rarity. Could I take a look? I'm interested and would gladly buy some. By the way, is it me or is he actually... Like, better looking now. <laughs> uh, dude, you got younger! Struggling contained the fury consumed him, the perfidious king pandered her as much as he could and presented his stock. <coughs> this madame is the finest and purest thread there is. You will never find something like this anywhere else except in the realm of fairies. Oh, where did you obtain these treasures? As I cannot tell, undoubtedly I'm associated with fairies. <laughs> the young Moore instinctively smiled. She was thinking about the value of these items and she was hoping to negotiate properly. 
I doubt you are good at negotiations. If I manage to make a good deal, I might be able to convince GDC of my management talents, which you don't have. It would be wonderful, I keep repeating that I'm more than capable of making the kingdom flourish. Which you are not. Tell Mention, how much are you willing to sell me those spindles? 100 gold coins? 1000 gold coins? More? Are you... Out of your mind? And you... T you... I, I just said you suck at negotiations for sure. Hundred and thousand? Seriously? That's a huge gap. What is wrong with you? Oh, madame. Those are unique pieces. I would need all castles such as this one to seem to get closer to an acceptable value. Let's go, man. Hold up. Come now. I cannot give you anything of the sort. They're about an exchange of currencies. What do you mean? I agree to give you this, this stuff for only ten gold coins. He sucks at negotiations as well. Just like his daughter. Then go. That is daylight robbery. In return, promise to grant me a small favor. Well, speak and I will decide. I would love to leave as a king just a few hours. Let me sleep here one night and you'll have all the gold threads you want. The princess frowned, somewhat suspicious. Sleep in the castle. This quiet and no trick is coming from a peddler. That I concede, but I have always dreamt of being a noble and living in a magnificent palace like yours. How do you not recognize him, for heaven's sake? The old man continued in a lamenting tone. You see, I've been through very difficult times. My family was ravaged by famine and war, and I only managed to find an occupation after long journeys. I'm now old, tired, and stooped. I may die in the upcoming months. Before I personally want to achieve that foolish goal, so accept you would make me the happiest man in the world. Although she was hardly excited, Kiona was not indifferent to these crocodile tears either. Dude, I mean, clearly lies. The mention of Amin triggered within her in painful memory of Flo and her family. <sighs> Not seeing her hesitation, he insisted and worked hard at being even more cunning, his voice cracking with faint emotion. I promise I will kill a low prof, I will hardly take any space, only to put me in an occupied room, your children's room for instance. Begrudgingly, she eventually yielded. Fine, why do not seem to be a bad man? <sighs> Who, in the right mind? Accepts into their own house someone they don't know. Come on Woman what is wrong with you everything I know but seriously w I mean technically she knows him, but she does not realize that but seriously for Who in the right mind does something like that? I would never do that Someone I don't know at all? In your own house? <laughs> no thanks, mate. That's ridiculous. I consent to accommodate you tonight. On one condition, you have to be the discreet as, as discreet as possible. I do not want you to stand out. I will act as a model of exemplary character. You can count on me, majesty. Sighing, the young woman gestured for him not to move and walked into the kitchen to explain the situation to her subjects. As she was passing in from front of Thibault, her dress fluttered and he noticed the knife she was carrying. He could not suppress a weak smile, his mind shrouded with dark thoughts. Oh, this will be the instru instrument of my misdeed. You should be punished by your own weapon, my daughter. Not content with contemplating his awful plan, he discreetly followed her as well in order to spy on what she was going to say to her servants. You have a guest tonight, so you'll have to add one additional set of silverware. Very well, madame, who's it for? Some outlandish merchant, he refused to sell me his products unless he can spend the night here. 
I'm counting on you not to brief a word about this to Genesee. He'll likely lose his temper once more and imagine that I'm cheating on him and... Really? I mean... <laughs> Kyona, you are so freaking dumb. You know very well they are not your servants fully. And basically they report everything to the Genesee. <laughs> Come on, like in, in five seconds he will know. You're so dumb. I guess we'll therefore eat separately and I want one of you to watch him all the times. His reasons are fishy. I'm concerned that he's going to attempt robbing on murdering us. And that's why you still keep him alive. Uh, huh. If you suspect him, then what? Oh my god, what a dumb boss. Like... You, someone clearly dropped her onto the floor with freaking when she was a child. Like, no other option, man. Fuck. What would I feel more at ease if I were to inconspicuously and Mr. Him a swimming potion? Excellent idea. That way, I'll be sure that he's not going to attempt anything. And given that he's listening, he'll switch the potion so you have it, for example. You are so dead. Satisfy Kiona retraced her steps and led the old king to his seat, where he would be served for the remainder of the night. Once again he used coaxing to better counter her suspicions. She had to leave him rather quickly as her husband had just returned home and was demanding her full attention. Throughout the whole meal she had very little appetite, unable to let go of that bad feeling that was haunting her. And she was no cr not wrong to fear the worst. Shortly after he had sat the table, a retainer came to find Thibaut. Are you not thirsty, sir? Indeed, I am. It is very kind of you to offer. The maiden held out to him a silver cup that he instantly identified as the sleeping potion that was supposed to be brought to him. Thus, he merely pretended to drink it. Satisfied, she walked away and, unbeknownst to her, he took advantage of the opportunity to sneak into the kitchens. Since the servants were very busy, he had no difficulty pouring the content of his cup into the pitcher that was meant to be served to the royal couple and returned to his seat. <coughs> the remainder of the meal ran smoothly. Avelt was tasked with leading him to the children's room, which was adjoining Kiona's and Genesis' room. Are you being serious? You place him... <sighs> wow. Like, wow. They are... Just wow. In a bad way. Wow. Her Majesty is doing you the honor of accommodating you for the night. Be worth your hospital hospitality and do not create trouble. Naturally. He's already started for. The treacherous man had other intentions. He pretended to lie in bed and patiently waited his time. Footsteps informed him that the king and queen were approaching. Consequently, he listened carefully and stayed as still as a stump until he was certain that the sleeping potion was working as intended. When the clock struck midnight, he furtively entered the, the royal bedroom, a candle in his hand. The cup was sound asleep, so he had no issue rummaging through the furniture in search of the young moon's knife. She had put the way near the quilt in her personal drawer. Thibaut carefully says it so that he would not awaken them. Oh, flesh of my flesh, you'll soon experience the same torments I suffered. Technically you didn't. But... Instead of threatening them with a blade, he returned to the children's bedroom. Are you being fucking serious? The twins were innocently snoring in their cuddle with an angelic face, as two little vulnerable things would. But it was not enough to discourage him. Upon gazing at his very own grandchildren, he raised his arm. His lips twisted in a cruel smile. Is nobody really, like... Wow. Okay, so you want to tell me. You let an absolutely unknown person into your castle. Like, you don't know anything about that. 
you have suspicions and you don't keep any of your supposed servants to keep an eye on the children and on you and so on. What the freak? Oh. Dude, she has no brain. <laughs> Literally. In the moonlight, he stopped them. Also, this guy is like complete garbage as well. Killing children is ridiculous. Signed Levish slid the dark destruct again again and again. On leaving on the sheets shapeless and bloody shreds of meat. The old king made a trip to the royal bedroom again so that he could put the stained dagger back where he had taken it. That son of a bitch. Then triumphant, he unwinded the court and escaped to the window, bursting with a startling laughter, a delirious laughter. But revenge is finally complete! Intoxicated with the feeling of victory, he did not pay attention to where he was putting his feet. And I guess his revenge failed. And in his haste, he inadvertently tripped and the cord slipped out of his hands. For a few seconds, his face froze in horror and he fell into the moat, into the abyss. He did not know how to swim, but it was insignificant. He did not survive his fall from the highest dungeon and his body would never be found. Fuck. Kiona is dead. She's so dead. If his body was still around, I mean, that would be clearly obvious. Then again, he's also not in the castle, so, you know. And what the... Uh, let's see. The next day, the wet nurse visited the twins and their bedside to breastfeed them as usual and only found two horribly mutilated shapes. He shrieks immediately awoke the real couple, but Genesee was the one who leapt out of bed first and he dashed toward the adjoining room. With horror, he could only confirm the murder. My children, my hairs, my little ones! Who, who dared, who committed such a monstrosity? As she had been lying down bed for a few more seconds, Kiona was laboriously emerging from a leaden slumber, her heart overwhelmed with dread. What is happening? The king turned back and, with a solemn air, he was preparing to announce the terrible news when a detail caught his eye. The, what detail? What detail? Wait, the, the knife is on the wardrobe, isn't it? The desk in which his wife would put away her belongings was covered in blood. His face immediately changed color. He opened the drawer, plunged his hand inside and pulled out the murder weapon, still coagulated with the blood of its victims. You traitors, you killed your own children! Me? What are you saying? Our children are dead. Oh god, what happened? They were stuck in their sleep and see what they found. Your knife is still streaked with blood. It was not me! Why would I do that? such a thing? I love my children! I would have never wanted to hurt them! Oh god, why? She broke down in tears and for a short moment the after rose in the mind of the sovereign. The merchant, I'm sure he's the one responsible for this. What merchant? Have you become insane? Oh boy. Kion attempted to explain to her husband that she had received an old man the night before. That he had requested to sleep in a newborn's room and that she had accepted. So because she had concealed the guest's existence, he could not leave her. She then begged for help by asking all the retainers who were present that night to confirm her version of events. Few of them had seen Thibault, which made her explanation even more unbelievable. The other witnesses could say they had served the merchant and did attempt to drag him as a precautionary measure, but he was impossible to locate. Genesee sent his men to score the city, knowing well would match the description. He had simply vanished. To make matters worse, some guards claimed they had heard a sinister laugh in the vicinity of the royal bedroom at the time of the murder. Since they could not identify the source of the sound, one explanation was ready made for the king. 
as the queen was waiting for information that could exonerate her with increased restlessness, the monarch came to find her in the cortex where she had been locked until further notice. Uh, of, okay. Extras. Archives. Tebaldo and Doralis part 2. Surprisingly, the tale does not end with Doralis Mary's genesis and bears his children. In that variation on Dunk's skin, the father also understands the ruse and manages to trace his daughter's whereabouts. Instead of sending his men, he goes through the trouble of traveling to England alone. He disguises himself as a merchant to clearly get closer to her. The plan follows is devilishly chilling. Tebaldo opens a store of precious stones that brings him a lot of attention. He then gets invited to the castle where he manipulates the queen to letting him sleep into her children's bedroom. The servants try to serve him a dragged wine to make him sleep, but he effortlessly avoids the clumsy trap and cold bloodly murders his own grandchildren during the night. Not only does he escape through the window, but he also manages to put the blame on Doralis. Once his crime is accomplished, he cuts his beard and poses as an astrologist. Completely unaware, Genesee comes to consult him in the hope of finding his children's murderer, and the fake astrologist takes this opportunity to advise him to search his wife as he deliberately used her knife. Horrified, the king discovers the murder weapon and sentences Doralis to be buried and devoured by worms. Fortunately, Tebaldo, too sure of himself, goes back to his palace and confesses all the misdeeds to the nurse who rushes to warn the king as soon as the opportunity presents. Is it convinced Genesee frees Doralis and decides to raise an army to take revenge on his father-in-law? The tale ends on the traitor's death and the uncertainty uh, that the couple will later on have an offspring. Damn. Dude, like, back in the day, people really were capable of creating some messed up stories, huh? <laughs> wow. So what's this, what's the situation? Were they able to clear my name? You must face the facts, madame. There is no trace of the man you mentioned. Yet I spoke to him. His face hardened. Let us be serious. This imaginary criminal is entirely fabricated, is he not? Ah, cruel and heartless woman. Enemy of your own blood. Traitor of your own children. You do not believe me. I believe I've been an exemplary wife. Eh. You had no reason to complain about me. Given that it's him, I bet he would find quite a lot. My complaint is you had no brain. <laughs> really? You've always appeared suspect to me with your conspicuous... Uh, conspicuous sense... Whatever. A spouse worthy of the name does not desire her husband. She limits herself to serving him. Okay, that's bullshit. He doesn't smile, fell away to open in shock. So that is what was bothering you from the beginning, huh? That I would show my desire for you. Tell me you're joking. Your purity was merely a smokescreen. I knew it from the start. You were sleeping around, were you not? Those children were not even mine. You spout pure nonsense if there's no one else. I've repeatedly told you so many times, and yet you still refuse to believe me. Had you been chased, you'd have never made such propositions, you whore. To the young woman's utter bewilderment, the king of Ghana had revealed his true colors. He had always been terrified by her independence, her strength of mind. Ever strength of mind, where? Ever since their wedding, he had never stopped trying to control her by any means, trying to belittle her, to force her to submit, and she had continuously resisted again and again, which is a good thing. His worldview was so twisted that he'd only perceive her through a binary lens. Either she was a saint or a vixen. Either she was pure and lenient young woman, or she was a depraved and impious horror. Foaming at the mouth with a bulging eyes, he was castigating her, insulting her. Because he had started despising his own wife for months now, he was all the more convinced of her guilt. It was the pretext he had been waiting for all this time, the pretext to punish her for her disobedience. Do not lie to me, witch. I know you've been sent by the devil to put my wife to the test. But I... No, you were once a good person. That is what I liked about you. <laughs> However, you have since then been possessed by the devil. He pervaded your body and your mind, gradually corrupting you. I don't see it coming. In a fit of madness, you have committed an infanc uh, infanticide with the sole purpose of hurting me. I suffer too. I don't want to see those children die. Ooh. He slapped her in the face so that she would keep quiet. Silence! Your words are snakes. You are trying to coax me. 
Ah, so this is my punishment for letting a loose woman into my life. But I will wash away that sin. My little ones will be avenged. Ooh. Genesi promptly requested that a stake be prepared in front of the palace's gate and ordered that the unfortunate soul still to be thrown into it. All the returnees working in the castle rushed to look at her execution. Quickly, whispers echoed from every direction. It's the only comfort that she's the culprit. The Lord claims so, he must be right. But I've met the stranger alive and served the beverage to him. The mistress has been tricked. She has nothing to do with this. The stranger would have not no reason to harm the queen. No, she must have paid him to carry out the crime. Then why would she leave the knife in place? A fit of madness, probably. She could not have been forbidden to raise her children. Would have rather killed them than let someone else have them. Jenna could no longer hear their voices. The brutality of her circumstances uh, was gradually making her lose all the sense and she was already unable to react. Shirley saw her husband swirl of arm as she was setting a light. The pile of kindling she was attached to all the while seeing... Wait. Oh, is she going to be barren alive? To all the while signing her death warrant. Herbie sentence you to death for heresy and witchcraft. To think that he used to put me on the pedestal. His favorite excuse to deny me everything. The excuse did not last that long. Damn. The first minutes were started to devour the wood at full speed. She could feel the smell of sulfur, the haze rising. Yet she was no longer capable of crying. Her eyes were still moist, however they remained desperately empty, as if life itself had prematurely left her. She did not flinch when she felt the ember licking her feet. The young woman did not even try to pray to God or summon her godmother either. She simply remained silent and worn out. Oh, so worn out. All the words evils had seemingly placed themselves onto her shoulders. Ah. Her vision having become blurry due to the smoke's emanation, she admired the fire as it was rumbling and growing excessively as an outside observer would. Everything felt so unreal, so sudden that the promise of pain seemed quite insignificant. What is the point? What's the point of turning back time if it is to die once again? Whatever I do, the same fate will always await me. I mean, because you make fucking stupid decisions, goddammit. My godfather was right, it's likely my destiny to perish young. If I invoke her, I'm going to believe again. I'm going to draw attention to people again. I'm going to do my best again. Be <laughs> wow, your best is very low level then. All for of this for nothing in the end. My hopes will be betrayed again. Those they love will leave me and they will be alone before they tell the truth. There is nothing for me here. There has never been anything except the void. I've been foolish to think I could change everything. That me but a life was waiting for me somewhere. No, God will not protect me. I'm a pair pound he can dispose of quite easily. If God really exists, he's disgusting character. Oh. Oh, Kiona. We might actually be on the same page when it comes to something. He enjoys seeing me suffer, I know it. Uh, I mean, I'm with God on this side. <laughs> Why else would he dare be more and more extreme? Why is it necessary for me to vomit blood, be disabled, or burn alive? Again, for it was your st absolutely stupid decision to let someone you don't know into the castle. Where? What tells me he's not preparing a torture mode of XX next time? I'm certain he would love to see them eat me away from the inside, tearing apart my pearl and flesh. Unless I'm going to be cut in half from my gentles to my head, or impaled on a stake. Maybe I'm not strong ideally enough to his taste. It's cra- On the other hand, it's crazy that she blames everything around still, but not her own choices, right? Is that where you're punishing me? Do you even exist? If you abandon John of Arc, on her stake, how could you save someone like me, a mere venomous worm? Yeah. The difference is, you don't compare to John of Arc, okay? 
She was someone amazing, unlike you. The greyish cloud infiltrated her lungs and soon she could only cough and hiccup. The world had completely disappeared, there was only his never-ending blaze and oblivion. The heat was making a rumble as her head was becoming heavier and heavier and her eyes were itching horribly. Very well, what more can I say? This is how it ends. No, They didn't get the death end option this time? Bullshit! I can't believe you've done that to me. What am I supposed to say now? You. What am I being punished for? <laughs> Why this torture? Where is the dead end? I want the dead end, god damn it. God damn it. I'll not go back, I'll not call Medea. Bullshit! Where is he? Dead end. Game. Come on. This is my punishment. I'll do it to the bitter end. If that's not matter, if this take leads between heaven or hell, hell is already right here on earth. Where's the dead end? Be such a tired, so very tired. I wish I could just sleep and never wake up. In my dreams, life would be nicer. I would not like anything and certainly not love. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God damn it! Where's the dead end? Forgive me, Nahima. I do not have the strength to fight anymore. I gave everything. I promise I gave everything. I'm conscious if I could finally escape the shadow that was looming over me. I only now realize that it was not enough. Believing was not enough. Dead end. Her mouth slightly open, Kiona squinted, distraught, and to squish anything unable to process what was happening to her. Her consciousness slowly, quietly faltered. I'm tired, so very tired. Yeah, I already said that. At every moment her eyes were closing on her own, she thought she had caught sight of a gigantic ray of light in the distance. Achievement unlock, burned at the stake. And she was plunged into darkness and apathy. Even though her eyes were wide open, she could not see a thing. No sound would reach her ears, no smell would reach her nostrils. Around her, nothingness. Nothing but a lightless, bottomless well. Darkness dripping on her face, like a slimy and sticky substance. Darkness was clinging onto her skin to better suffocate her. With its skilled hands, the spell tightened its grip, tightened its grip, tightened its grip. Huh. Nothing must remain, not a single drop of optimism, not a single burst of life. Absorb, absorb the jet black sea, absorb what is left of my soul. She's awake, I guess. After being burned at stake. <sighs> I bet it's the same moment as usual. So let's end it right here, right now. <laughs> we'll continue tomorrow. I guess. This sucked. I mean, again. I mean, uh, over here. Dude, I mean, she had a freaking absolute freak of a psycho as a husband. Then again, she agreed to marry him, right? So, that was the first mistake, obviously. Because she agreed to that after two days. Or something like that. Maybe, maybe three, okay? Maybe three, but it's basically the same. Still, too fast. And, well, the second problem, obviously, was to allow someone she doesn't know into her own freaking castle. Someone she was already... She mentioned it herself. She was suspecting he might try something weird. And yet she still allowed the guy inside. Like, why would you do that, woman? You have to be ridiculously dumb to do something like that. 
Me personally, I would never allow someone I don't know into my own house overall. Not a chance, mate. I don't care how bad a situation someone might be in. Never. It's way too risky. Way too risky. <sighs> Am I a trash person saying that? That's a dude, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not taking a gamble like that, okay? Especially now. Especially now. And especially if I were living in, for example, Germany, Spain, Spain Italy, Sweden, something like that. This is huge. No, you know, it, even bigger. Not a chance. <laughs> I just had to mention that, didn't I? I just had to. Anywho, let's end for today. Uh, we'll continue tomorrow, I believe, as I mentioned before. Uh, still, if you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing. Always appreciate it, even though I really don't like saying that line I just said overall. Uh, the game is linked in the description, of course, to Steam. By the way, we are like 30, almost 33 hours into this game. What the freak? For there have been points where I would record one episode. Step away <laughs> for a little bit. For like half an hour and then would record the second one, for example. Uh, so let's say there has been times where the, ga the game would run a little bit sort of in the background as well. Also, to be fair, that music you're hearing right now, it's really good, overall. As like a sort of um, background noise sort of thing when you're doing something else as well. So yeah. Anyway, let's end it right here right now. Mm. <laughs> and I guess I can once again end it like don't be like Kiona basically just don't be like Kiona and all things should turn out okay -ish, at least yeah with that being out of the way hope you all have a wonderful day hope to see you in the next video as well bye bye